Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how to make a DIY watercolor palette. Um, and also, I found these really, really cheap paints at the store the other day. Look, $4.99 for this set of 18. And it is uh, the Marie's Company, which actually was my first brand of watercolor paints when I was a little girl. When I was seven, I had a Marie's watercolor set. So I was just curious to see if they're as awesome as I remember, because they're pretty easy to find online. And these are at Ocean State Job Lot for $4.99 for this set. And I also grabbed this um, set of brushes at Ocean State Job Lot. And these are by Princeton, which I love Princeton's brushes. Um, and these were... There's no price tag on here. They're $5.99, I believe, for this set of four brushes. And I like the larger set. So we'll see how these work, because I'm going to show you how to make a palette, and I'm also going to test out these colors. All right, so what you're going to need is a shallow tin, or what I have here is an old CD container from, um, there was a rubber stamp company called Sugarloaf or Ink Boutique that had these stamps called CDs, and they came in these little clamshell CD containers. So we're going to use this. And I've cut a piece of sheet magnet down to fit the bottom of this um, container. And I'm going to use a little bit of adhesive. This probably isn't necessary. And if you're using a tin, you definitely don't need to do this. But since it is plastic, I'm going to use some adhesive. And I'm just going to stick that down in there. And it's cut just to size. It's actually cut pretty perfectly, so I think it would have just stayed in there anyway. This is an old cracked one. I always keep packaging because I never know what I'm gonna use it for. Now this is like so cool and easy. It just kind of came to me the other day. Look, bottle caps are magnetic. My husband makes these bottle cap openers with a magnet to hold the bottle caps and then it hit me. These are magnetic. I could make a really cool watercolor palette that could be like you could change out your colors whenever you wanted to, even if you didn't have, um, you know, even if you, still had paint in one of the pans. You can make your own pans with these bottle caps. The bottle caps, um, I'm, I don't know how long they would last before rusting, so they all have like a coating in them, or they're made with a material that doesn't rust. I'm not, they, they're obviously some sort of steel. Um, and I think like they might rust if they stayed wet for a long time, but usually you let your paints dry out, so I'm not really that concerned. And I'm also gonna put my really cheap watercolor paints in there, so I'm also not concerned, but that's one of those things too I could kind of let you know if they rust on me or not. All right, and I have, and I'm not a big lush or anything, but I have friends who, um, younger friends, who, you know, have parties and stuff, and I just ask them if they'll save me their bottle caps because I use them for a lot of kids' classes. So see, they're not gonna fall out. I think that's really cool. All right, now let's grab these paints and see what we have here. Um, so let's see, do I have enough? Let's see, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, that's 16, 17, 18, 19. So I should have one, um, I should have, definitely enough here. So, and what I also did here was I took a piece of watercolor paper and I traced the circles all over it so I would be able to make an indexing chart in case I need to, uh, in case I want to index that. So why don't I find something to open that with? My fingernails aren't cut. Oh, there we go. Yep. My fingernails did cut it, actually. I didn't think they were going to, but they did. Utilitarian fingernails. They're for utility, not for looks. There we go. And I'm just going to, um, you know, it's pretty much a rainbow order the way it is. So I'm just going to go fill it up the way it is. And I'll start with white. And that'll also make it easy when I go to index it uh, to see what I have. So these have the little little caps with the pokey bar bit in it. So I'm going to poke that to open it and just squeeze out some. Hopefully, ooh, it's squeezing pretty hard. I think I might not have poked that deep enough here. Maybe I got a complete dud of paint. I remember though, it was so funny because um, my first watercolors were the Marie's, I think they were probably the Chinese watercolors. Oh, there we go. This is a really thick paint. Now, because these are inexpensive student grade paints, um, I might not want to let them completely dry out because sometimes when you do, they crack and fall out because there's not enough, um, glycerin in them or gum arabic in them to kind of bind well they usually have plenty of gum arabic i think it's a glycerin that they're light on so you know if you are going to let it dry out you might want to put like a drop of honey or glycerin in there otherwise it might crack but then again they might not because they're going to be in an odd shaped container which i don't think instead of an open palette so they probably won't be as likely to fall out all right this is entertaining and all i'm sure for you but what i think i'm going to do is actually pause the video and when we come back we'll have all this paint in the palette. All right, we're putting the last color in. It's funny, it's black and you all know how much I love to use black. Not, but I am gonna put it in there. 
Um, and now I'm going to show you how I'm going to make the mixing area of this palette. Um, so far so good. The colors look really beautiful. Um, and hey, five bucks. You can't, you can't beat that. Um, all right. So I'm going to take this, uh, the piece of watercolor paper that I trace the circles on. I'm going to tape it to the outside of the lid. That way, when we use the watercolors, we'll have a white inside to mix on. All right. So that will be the palette mixing area. And then we'll have the indexing out here. So what I'm going to do is try out these brushes because I'm really curious about these. Um, I can't resist inexpensive art supplies, especially if I, if I think it will benefit my students or my the people that watch my videos, you guys, because um, it's nice. It's nice if you can, you know, fund your hobby without going broke. And I know a lot of a lot of people have kids. A lot of some of you guys are kids, and you want to you want to paint, but you don't have the means to go and spend a hundred dollars on a set of paints. All right. So far, oh, these have a nice snap. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet. I'm not going to paint the white one in because um, because it's white. And usually I don't even squirt white out on a palette if it comes with it. I'll reserve it if, if I get myself into into trouble <laughs> while I'm while I'm working on a painting. Then that's when I would get the white out. Oh, those are pretty. I'm just adding a little color on the edge and watching it kind of fade in. That way I can kind of see how it's going to look. Now, this is a question that I get sometimes. Um, can I use the paint straight from the tube? Well, yes, you can. A lot of artists do. It's completely up to you. I just find that you waste less if you let it dry in a palette. That said, with more student grade colors, um, it might dry up in the palette and get, you know, kind of flake out. So, you know, you may decide that you want to use, if you're using student colors, you want to use it right from the, right from the tube. So it's just, it's personal preference. With high quality paints, I find that they can dry in the tube and be, uh, dry in the palette and be fine to come back to life. And I'm just going to go ahead and fill in my colors here and it will give me a really good idea um, as to the quality of the paint. Now, generally, like I said, I'd let it dry, but with a student grade paint, I might not. I might just kind of keep it in a semi-moist state. So far, so good. You know, of course, using, I'm just going to go ahead and wet all these circles at once. Um, using it right from the tube is going to give you more vivid color. So you just need to see how we just have a tiny little drop of that on the tip of my brush. And it's important when you index it out like this. Oh, I like that rose color. Um, that you keep it in the order that they're in there. And that way, well, I guess you could always pick them up and move them because it's just magnets holding it down. Um, but that way you'll know exactly where everything is. Yeah, I think, I think as long as you have decent paper, these paints will be fine. They probably just don't have the expensive pigments that would be, oh my gosh, that's pretty. What color is that? Is that, let me see, I think that's what they called crimson. That was in the tube that says crimson, but that's like a violet. Unless I got it mixed up, I don't think I, I think that's rose and I think this is what it said was crimson. That's really pretty, but it's not what I would call crimson. What's the next one? No, you know what? No, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That is vermilion. This is what they called rose and the next one will be crimson. See, it's important. To, it's important to index. I might go in with a marker and um, actually mark that. Wait a minute. Oh, that's not right. This is vermilion. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go in with a um, with a marker. I think. I think I've got myself turned around somehow. I don't know if you guys want to watch me do all this or if I should just come back after it's all done. Well, that's kind of an interesting color. Yeah, I'm gonna pause it. We'll be back in a second. Okay, I have regrouped. I was like going off in la-la land there for a minute. I don't know what I was doing. Anyway, I got my little chart made so I'll know exactly what's there. That is definitely rose. That is definitely crimson. That's definitely vermilion. I think because when I filled it up, instead of going left to right, I kind of snaked around with my colors so that they would be close to their friends. Does that make sense? Oh my gosh, I sound like a lunatic. Okay, um, so now I want to check all those brushes. So I showed you the paints there. 
and this is the number of this kit here the set of brushes I got for six dollars has a one inch flat wash a four inch round and a half inch round and the reason I got this is because I thought it would be most useful to um, beginners people starting out people that or teachers trying to grow their stash so that they have more for their students um, so that's why I grabbed these they have uh, stained handles it looks like stained and varnished um, I have never had a problem with any of the Princeton brushes. I love their snap line that I've seen at AC Moore because very affordable. Um, they come to a nice point. They have a good snap here. And let me, let's just um, let's just play with some of these paints. Now my indexing has not dried yet. I should have probably dried that <laughs> when I paused the video, but I'm, I'm just not with it today. I have like a lot of my mind, I guess. Um, so I'm going to grab some of that rose color because I thought that was so pretty. And since the color is brand new on my palette, I'm just going to gonna kind of work it out a little bit and um, so I don't have any globs. That's it. That's the, the thing when you're working right from the tube is that you don't want to have big globs on your brush. Okay so I know that's mixed up pretty well. Now with a flat brush let's just do like a it's got a nice crispness. Okay let's see how the colors perform in a wet into wet wash. I'll just wet that area out. Can you see? I mean, there's nothing real scientific about this. I'm just kind of playing with, with color here. I want to see how the colors flow, because that's another thing. Sometimes with the um, student grade paints, is they don't really flow and mix as well as others. It does seem like these are not flowing as well and mixing as well, like on the paper, as um, more artist quality pink pigments. Probably because there's more uh, filler in these rather than pigment. So that's kind of how they save money on the on the uh, student lines. It just has less less uh less pigment, it's more filler. So what I'm going to do is make sure I have that mixed up good, no gobs. Add a little fresh water to that. See, it's I mean it's blending, but you have to help it with the brush a little bit more. So that's what I mean by that. So you know, if you've got paint, I've and I've had I've had um, people mention that to me before on my blog in the comments saying that there, um, they can't get their paint to move and that's probably that's probably why you probably need just a little more water because you have like a student grade paint and there's nothing wrong with that that's just um, that's just nature of the beast I'm using the cerulean blue and I do think this is the same paint that I had when I was seven because I remember that cerulean blue very clearly and it's a little different than the artist quality cerulean blue so it doesn't um, it doesn't flow quite as well so if you like to do a lot of um, crazy wet into wet washes that's probably not going to be the best um the best paint for that but i think that's probably where it's going to have its most limitations i like that brush though all right so let's try this little um number four round now if i press more i'm going to get a thicker line if i press less i'm going to get a thinner line it holds, it holds a pretty decent amount of paint Has good control. Let's see with our flat here. Let's get a little that sap green. I always love to try out sap greens in different lines because it's my favorite watercolor color. I think that and the rose. Nice control there. Nice crisp lines. You do ribbons and stuff. All right, that brush seems to be pretty good. Now, when you're working with a brush that has wooden handles, like a lot of um, a lot of brushes do, just make sure, especially with watercolor, because you really don't have to rinse it off, and you can leave it until you you know usually don't even need to wash it with soap and water if it's watercolor. Don't leave it in the water because if you leave it in the water and it's a wooden handle, the wood's going to expand and the paint's going to crack. This is varnished, but still the ferrule could come loose, this metal part, if you let it sit in the water and the wood expands. So just keep that in mind. All right, and I love a big round brush. And um, why don't I use a little of this Prussian blue here? Ooh, isn't that a pretty color? Let's drop some of that in there. See, yeah, it just doesn't flow. It doesn't flow as well as, you know, an artist quality paint. But let's see. Thick and thin, thick and thin. And that's what you want to be able to do with a brush. You want to be able to get control. Um. So I'm pretty happy with this. I will definitely leave this up on my table. They're cheap enough that I don't have to worry with the kids using it. Well, my kids are pretty good anyway with my supplies, but I definitely recommend this as a kit to buy your children um, or even yourself if you're a hobbyist and you just want or if you want to get started with watercolor. Because the thing is, 
If you are beginning in watercolor and you go and you buy the best paint that there is and you spend a couple hundred dollars on paints and paper and brushes, you may be too afraid to actually use them. If you go buy a set like this, six bucks, you know, six bu uh, you know, five dollars set of paint, six dollars set of brushes and a pad of inexpensive watercolor paper, by the time you've used up that paint, you're gonna be darn good. So then when you go and you buy the M. Graham or the Windsor Newton or the Schminky watercolors and you paint with that, you're gonna be like, oh my goodness, you're gonna see such an improvement. But if you start out with those other paints, you're not really gonna know what to compare it to. You're not, you, I would definitely get your, these are like your training wheels, get your, experience with these less expensive paints and then branch out into the into the more expensive things. The other thing I like about this is if you have children and you um you paint with your kids, the student paints are going to be non-toxic. Now let me just double check here. If it, I don't know if it says non-toxic on here, but those the the pigments that are toxic, the materials used are non-toxic and are mixed in proportion with refined gum making them easily dissolvable in water. Um for you and your children's good health using Marie's watercolors I um, mean, aluminum tubes are the best choice. So, you know, you can use these and I'm not sponsored by Marie's or anything, but you can use these with your kids and not worry that they're getting cadmium, lead, cobalt, um, nickel, or any of these other chemicals in their system because I, I don't have it so far on the other table, but a lot of times I have a big cup of coffee here or, you know, your kids might be sitting here and they might have a granola bar or, you know, they might not be as careful when they're working with materials or maybe they, they get some on their hands and then, you know, they put their hands in their mouth because kids do that. You know they're gonna be safe when you use a student grade supply generally. So there's another reason to start off with the less expensive brand and then work your way up. But these brushes, I think these brushes would be great to have on hand. I would use them in my paintings too. I like Princeton brushes. I like Royal brushes. You know, there's a lot of great brushes out there. But these are certainly a great value. I hope this helped you. Um, I When I came up with the idea to use like, and maybe I'm probably not the first person to come up with this, but I thought bottle caps and a magnet. Oh my gosh, the best palette ever. Um, so when I, when I thought of that, I'm like, I've got to share this because I just love DIY palettes and, um, and I hope you guys do too. And there we have a little indexing. So if I ever get confused, because as you can see, watercolors look a lot darker on the palette than they do when you have them on nice white paper. You have the little indexing and when that's all dry I think I'll probably use a pen and maybe write the names from the tubes so that when I go to refill it or when my kids go to refill it they'll be able to do that. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'm sorry it was so long and I'm sorry for saying I'm sorry because you guys will always say stop saying you're sorry it's fine Lindsay have it as long as you want. <laughs> so okay I won't say I'm sorry anymore please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you like DIY art supply and palette tutorials and until next time happy crafting.